the reason why there's such a big push right now for oil and gas to develop everything is because they realize there's something else coming that will replace it. You know, there, there's alternative energy stuff coming on the horizon where wind power and all the solar and all it, there'd be something else, hydrogen, there'd be something that will make that asset worth nothing. And so now let's get it, let's sell it to foreign countries, let's let's develop the hell out of it now while we can. And I think that's why there's a panic right now. It's just, uh, they're trying to get uh, as much money now as they can because it, it's a finite resource. It's not going to be. But I always thought, well, you know, if we need oil and gas in the future, you know, we have these oil and gas reserves that we ho we hold. Why not just hold it underground? Just keep it underneath there. And until we really need it, why overdevelop it and cap everything? You know, and so it's it's a ridiculous kind of scenario that uh, is impacting people's lives and their economy and their their uh, other industries tremendously. For the sake of just okay, well, I was uh, I was born in in Weld County uh, in Greeley. My mom was uh, born in Greeley, and they uh, were. The family was homesteaders around in, in Weld County. Uh, her, her dad's brother was a, a farmer there. And so I go back a few generations in that county, and, and at one time it was a, a very agricultural-based uh, economy where it was uh, farms and ranches, uh, pretty unspoiled, and a very beautiful place to grow up in the 50s. And I saw that change dramatically uh, over the years as oil and gas production started there. And it's, uh, the amount of traffic, the amount of, of uh, uh, disturbance to farmland, to ranch land, the, to the water rights that uh, farm and ranch uh, families had that uh, I was familiar with. Uh, I had a friend that had an 80-acre farm uh, that she raised horses on. She didn't own the mineral rights. And right now, uh, there's uh, uh, 16 oil and gas wells on her property. She gets absolutely nothing off of it. I was a realtor over there for 25 years, and I did a market evaluation on her place before oil and gas development. It was 725,000. Uh, I talked to her recently, and she wanted. She told me she had to get out of there. She had to leave. She couldn't stand it anymore. And I told her she didn't have anything to sell. She basically lost her equity in that, in that uh, ranch. Uh, and the stories she has are, are typical of, of oil and gas uh, development type of uh, properties. Uh, I then I was living. By then I was living up in Boulder County. I was living at my ward. And I decided I was going to retire and I was going to move to a place where it was unspoiled because I was living in a really pristine place up there in the mountains. I didn't want to move back to Well County naturally. And I moved and bought uh, a place over here in Crawford up in Missouri Flats. And uh, the second I went under contract, big headlines hit. It said 33,000 acres uh, are being nominated for oil and gas development and leasing. And I thought, oh God, you know, here I've just put everything I own into this place. And I thought, well, I'm not going to back out of the contract. And a lot of people did back out of their contracts. The perception of that happening impacted the real estate industry here in the Valley. We talked to Bob Larry about that. He's a very familiar with it. And I, uh, I thought, well, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to live here, I'm going to do something about it, because we can still save this. And this is very rare in Colorado that there isn't an area that has been somehow developed you know, and has been uh, uh, tragically lost forever, because once it's developed, that, that never gets changed. And all that oil and gas is down there. It's not going to go anyplace. It could be held in reserve for someday when the technology gets to where they can use that oil and gas, uh, get it out of the ground without all the pollution, the traffic, and everything that goes along with it. But the socioeconomic impacts are, uh, if anybody thinks it's positive, they need to go up to the back, they need to go up to Rifle, they need to go into Weld County and, and talk to those people and see if they think it's a good deal. Because I, I've never talked to anybody that said, yeah, this is really good after they've seen what happened.